Good one, good one. What's going on, my peeps? How we doing tonight? Back once again for another review on a classic tonight. Um, as always, though, before we get into it, make sure you hit that like, subscribe, hit that sub button, hit that bell notification if you're new to the channel. Get updates on anytime we go live every Saturday, 7.30 p.m. Eastern, and uh, it's going to be a good one because we got Horror Fest coming up, and um, yeah, tonight we are here to review Alfred Alfred Hitchcock's classic, The Birds. Nineteen sixty-three, um, baby. Same year as you. Well, I was born. You, uh, you sure? You oldest sure? Fuck, <laughs> all the fuck that movie. Sixty years old. Um, but I, I know everybody loves his Psycho movie, as do I. I'm a huge fan of Hitchcock. I grew up um, watching Psycho. And uh, the birds, especially, but um, I was always fond of the birds because this is one that me and my mom watched growing up, and um, it's just a classic. And there's nothing like it. There's nothing that has ever tried to mimic it, or well, I wouldn't say mimic it because Bats is a one that's very similar to it. It's not like trying to be exactly like it, but it's taking the example, which I do love Bats. Um, but no one's ever tried to remake the birds. And before the birds, this was the first thing we ever had anything. Well, they with. did do a, a TV sequel to this birds too. That was horrible. So yes, yes. And well, she, we was did get a sequel. she was in it. But... I had no idea she was in this. I didn't know it was a TV sequel either. TV I knew sequel. that it did get one sequel, but I've never seen it. Well, um, it was poor. Yeah, I, I had a feeling. I didn't even know if there was honestly like any relation. Sometimes you get those weird sequels that like have uh, nothing. It to was do direct, with it. it was directed by Rick Rosenthal, and who did really? genre stuff, and he had his name taken off it. And he, no used, way. he used Alan Smithy instead because it was he, that bad. That's so funny. And he's the Halloween two director, and right. Halloween, he, he so he took his name off that, but not Resurrection Halloween Resurrection. Well, you think Halloween Resurrection is worse than the birds too? I, don't I haven't seen it, so oh. I guess that must be really bad. <laughs> oh, so. I'll have to check that out for shits and giggles because I think Vinegar Syndrome did a Blu-ray on that. So oh, really? that would be—I I swear, I think that somebody gave that. Oh, some boutique company did, but I'm um, sure I'm sure it's streaming someplace. I'm sure. I'm sure. Awesome. Um, yeah, I would never, I wouldn't buy it, but I'm very happy to own this. Um, I never got that collection set, so. Um, but like I said, this might be my favorite. This is probably my favorite Hitchcock movie. It would be very close between this and Psycho, but this is probably my favorite just because of how unique it is and how. Yes. Um, that would be my I, favorite. It, yeah, I, I I love it, man. I I think just the cinematography on this movie is gorgeous, man. Like the the actors or and the actresses right. in this, they look. Well, they they did, look so beautiful in this. You know what yeah, I mean? Like everybody kind of has that like look where you're just kind of like almost like a Giallo movie. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like well, this movie. This movie did a few things that they never had done before, which is allow the the 
sequences while the birds are flying around the room was all done behind glass. So they filmed it with glass in front of it with a camera in back with the birds and they just superimposed it over the scene and they did a hell of a job because it looks phenomenal. Really? And, then, and then there was that scene at, you noticed the diner right before the guy drops a cigarette and it blows up. Yeah. They do that always, almost like montage of her face screaming and it goes from like this to that. Yeah. That that was never done in any movie. He yeah. that was the first for that cinematographer. I, I always love that scene too of the guy getting blown up at the. So gas there's, there's so many there's so many uh, shots um, that are just done that were never done before in a movie. Yeah, but, I believe I believe it. I I think this movie is shot so well. I I just I love the the way the use of his camera. Uh, well, just to set movie. this up, uh, I'll go ahead and set up if you don't mind. So basically, we have. Uh, Tippi Hedren, who is uh, Melanie Daniels, the star of the movie, basically. She was also in Marnie that he directed. She was in two of his films. Of course, there's there's a reason why that happened. We can discuss that later. And then we had Rod Taylor, who was in Time Machine. He played Mitch. Yeah. Uh, we had... Uh, He's in Glorious Bastards, too, as Winston Chur Churchill. Okay. We, and we had Jessica Tandy uh, from Batteries Not Included. She was the old lady in that. She's here. She's the mother. In this yeah. Life. And then we had Veronica Cartwright, who's a little girl. She was an alien. Uh, she was one of the astronauts in Alien, that one that got killed there. Oh, uh, really? The other girl, not not the Ripley girl, but the other. I know, <laughs> I know, because you would have said aliens then. Right. right. Yeah. And then and then uh, and then we had uh, finally Suzanne Plachette, who was in a bunch of things, Bob Newhart and stuff like that. So we had a big cast, and you know, Melanie Daniels plays this like socialite, rich girl who gets her way. That's always playing tricks and stuff, and. You get that love affair between her and Rod Taylor. She's yeah. out buying birds for her father, buys birds for him, gets him with the family. The mother's overprotective. And then we get throughout the whole thing, you know, just from the beginning, we get the shot, right? Right from the get-go, we get the shot of the birds. And we get the, then we get the gull attack. And then we get the attack in the school. It's like ramps up the suspense. I love the school attack. And it's just this, the sense of dread in this movie. Um, and we'll discuss the scenes, but um, it, it's just very overwhelming i mean you get it from from every angle right from the beginning yeah and i, and I love the uh the but, slow yeah. build up i was gonna I mean. say they build the tension so well man and um i i love just uh, that school attack when like you see just like uh what is her name tippy taylor um, tippy hedron. Tippy hedron just like when she like turns her head and that one little girl is just getting uh, on, like face down in the dirt and right. one like gold like, pecking at her and I, she's like get the hell yeah oh and, and most and most of the shots in this movie in with the very exception of like later on in the house when they're breaking through the window some of that stuff is puppets and some of it's real I had a feeling but, but the majority of the stuff in this movie was all done with real birds they basically you know put meat of something on the guy's hands yeah. so it would kind of peck him with the blood being there, it's all practical. That's you insane know. to just and the, and the same thing. The, the the little girls, they basically put something on them so that would it would kind of peck at yeah. them to eat the peanut butter or something. Right. Probably shit they couldn't get away with today, but they, they did back yeah. then. It's um, crazy because you would think that that's all practical, if anything. Right. But they, I mean, it looked. That's why I think it's held up so well over the years because they did use real birds. You right. know, as much as they and, could. And, and that's really the only knock on this movie, as far as when you get a four K, is that. As I said, a lot of the movie was shot behind glass, and it's very hard to clean up optical effects. They look right. the age, they get dirt on them. So, you know, in that case, but the, the 4K still looked pretty damn good. Uh, I, thought, I, I thought it looked good. I thought it looked um, really good. Yeah, and, uh, you know, I, I just love how it starts off a slowly small town, you know, and she's bringing the birds over, and, and then you get the first attack on the boat. Where the where the the girl swoops down and, and gets her, you know, and that was all kind of done point of view. She's kind of watching the house, and you're kind of watching the bird. Yeah. And the same thing at the school attack, you know that that sequence where she sit down to have a cigarette, and she watches one bird, sees one bird, two birds, two birds. They cut back and forth, and then they just show them slowly building up, and then her reaction to it. Yeah, which was a phenomenal scene. Hell yeah. Um. Yeah, I'm, I'm doing all the talking, but yeah, you, you probably oh, saw this. Drawing. It's been a while since I saw this movie, so it was really good being able to watch it because it's been probably, you know, I have probably haven't seen it in about 10 years. Um, Did you notice I, the Hitchcock cameo? 
the cameo? No. Yeah, right in the beginning when she's going in the bird store, he's walking out with the two little dogs. Oh, That's yeah, 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 yeah. I didn't even notice that. Yeah, he always Wait. puts himself in the movie somewhere. Yeah. Um, but there, there's just so many iconic things in this movie that I've always loved. Um, like you said, that gas station when the guy gets blown up. I love towards the end. I know we'll get more into it, but once like, you know, so many of those things you see like, George Romero ripping off like the entire end when they're in the house and Night of the Living Dead. That's like all, that's almost the entire ending of this yeah, movie. That could be zombies, basically. Yeah. No, I mean, there's really two things in this movie I think were inspirations. I mean, you get that, the ending, the whole ending of the movie, once they get in the house, is literally Night of the Living Dead. Yeah. Um, you know, Straight up. Which is nothing wrong with it. I love it. I, I love the ending of this. And then yeah, which is great. I mean, all these night barricaded by all these birds, and they're coming through the windows. Right. And just, I mean, night, night of the Living Dead you know? is like Night of the Living Dead is like five years after this movie. So yeah, I man, was a big, I think, a big homage to to that. The, the other thing would be, I think, is the whole sequence that's filmed inside the restaurant because yeah, you get like one. like the mist had that, you know, and Stevie King wrote that whole sequence in the supermarket with all the different people interacting. Yeah. And they're like like turning on each other too. Yeah. Turning on, yeah. The, you get, you get that in the movie that, that kind of like shifts gears. It was just kind of like them. Then all of a sudden you bring in this whole big cast of other people and you get the, the woman, the old woman that knows everything about birds and you get the, the drunken guy coming in to have a drink and the boat captain. And yep. you get that one woman with the kids there that, is scared and at the end she's the same you're the reason why this is happening you're evil and you gotta think some of that because it really is reminiscent of, of the mist yeah. you know, rubbed off in king and durban when they uh they haven't seen that because oh, man, it's it's so close this is such an iconic monster movie man like i i feel like people would think that monster movie this is a monster movie you know what i mean this is a, a classic monster movie and one of my all-time favorite things about this movie is that you don't get a reason why these birds are doing what they're doing. They're trying no. to figure out that in that's a great thing in that diner where they're like, why, why are they doing this? She's like, I don't know why, you know, like she has no, she's like, I was thinking of the children or this, and then they turn on her thing. I think you're evil. Right. I think this is all because of you. And then you get her that, yell, that lady yelling at her and they're like, I love those old school face close-ups. You know what I mean? And she, right. you just get the smack in the face. She's like, Oh, but I, I right. love that there is no reason why these anim these birds are doing what they're doing. And I love that conversation with the one lady who's acting like she's a uh, maybe she is a bird expert. I forget, but right. she's like, she's like, I have never seen gulls and crows and all right. these like flock together. That would be crazy. That we would have no chance. And she's like, and then everyone's like, yeah, that would be crazy. Like, and, but that's what they're doing, you know. And. Well, I like that Hitchcock when he, you know, Hitchcock didn't write this, but he ad adapted this. It was a short story, I guess, in the fifties. Oh, well, but, but but I like I like how all the characters' movies it, uh, they're all complicated characters. They're all flawed characters, but they're not all they're not bad characters. I mean, she's had a past, you know. Um, the mother could have easily turned to be out one of these, you know, yippy type of vindictive mothers. She's not. Um, Suzanne Plachette, who plays the the teacher that gets killed, um, she's next to open the Rod Taylor. So it, I mean, he, she easily could have been like trying to break them up and doing this, but she's not either. No. I mean, they're all characters who are just they're not caricatures. They're real people in this movie. And that's why that's, you feel what I, it. that's what I really like. That's why you feel it when she dies. When Suzanne Plachette dies, you know they have her laid out in the in the thing and the eyes all pecked out and stuff. Yeah, that uh, was, you know that you you, you feel for that you know and and. Veronica Cartwright did such a great job in that scene when she's telling what happened later on. I mean, all the acting in this movie is top notch. I I, I completely agree. And, and it's and, and it's and it's uh, really crazy to think that this was Tippi Hedren's first movie. I mean, she went on to she went on to do Marnie uh, after this with Hitchcock, and then some other stuff. And uh, then she's Melanie Griffith's mother. That's who. who and this like we'll talk about some of the controversy around this movie too, but. Um, she did yeah, a great job. Good to hear. Uh, she did a great job, and and Rod Taylor always is great. He was great in the Time Machine and a bunch of other movies. So, I mean, he's real good in this. Uh, everybody's really good in this. Yeah, there's this nobody so I would say that's bad in this at all. They yeah. all do play their part perfectly. Uh, the only thing, the only thing you have to, the only thing is a little crazy is you know, 
all these people are talking with you. Well, that old Maine accent, yeah, but that in fucking Maine, they're in California. So are they? Yeah, that was Bodega Beach. Yeah, so I, I, in California. It, it's it's. I love the setting of the film too. It's just very, it's beautiful, and that makes sense that it's in California because yeah. you get the oceans and everything, and it's very. And the, yeah, another the movie takes time. Basically, the entire thing during daylight. And I love that, man. It's, it's it's not like this very dark movie. It's very bright. Yeah, except beautiful. at the end where they have to go through that ordeal. But I night. love that. I yeah. love that and ending. Then they, and then, but when they leave the house, it's daylight again. And yeah, I and, love that. Like just that, all that when they're like, it's almost kind of like the opening of Night of the Living Dead when you yeah. kind of see the landscape and you just see the car driving down. But this is where you just see the birds. Like kind of all, you yeah, know, it's kind of all sitting there, and it gets darker, and then you see kind of the ocean to the side, and you see like them driving. You know, I I love that shot at the end. Yeah, Hitchcock had to fight for that. Too. He had to fight two battles for that. One is what they wanted to have. They wanted to have additional stuff. But the writer had written stuff, and the studio wanted a scene after the ending, but he wanted it to be more ambiguous than what it was. Because the, the ending's great because are they going out into a world that's like going to be decimated all the birds attack? Or is this going right. to be the end? You don't know. You yeah. know. They're just driving, they're leaving. And also, he didn't want, but he lost that battle. He didn't want the card at the end that said the end because he wanted it completely ambiguous. But the studio made him put the end. Like, people yeah. want, people needed to know that the movie was over when it right. was over. Yeah. You know? But uh, but other than that, he kept things pretty much the way he wanted them. And I, I think without a movie like this, you don't get John Carpenter be doing all his ambiguous endings because yeah. this was a huge thing where they didn't do things like that. There was no ambiguous ending People, like that. There Carpenter, was no like Carpenter and um, I forget the other guy, but they both said this is this is a, uh, a a film that really inspired them. Yeah, yeah. I wanted Carpenter. I Carpenter. There's a there's a, uh, um, I think it's called, I think it's the the birds Hitchcock's monster movie, and it, that's what I was watching before this, and it has interviews with all these big directors, mm -hmm. and Joe Dante, uh, yeah. John Carpenter are in it, and um, yeah, there was the, Dante that was the director of Tremors said that he didn't give Tremors an explanation, which he I believe he created the like idea and script for Tremors. I'm pretty sure that the director mm. did the screenplay. He said that they specifically didn't give Tremors a reason for why this monster is doing what they're doing or the creation. They didn't right. give an explanation because of this movie. Yeah, and Romero did the same so thing. Awesome. You never you never really knew what, why it was happening. You know, it just kind of was happening. So I like that. And that's why you brought, right. why uh, John Carpenter was so, so mad when they did Halloween 2 and they're trying to explain like why he did this and why, he, you know what I mean? Oh, you mean the Rob Zombie specific. remake? Maybe, but oh, no. Oh, he, no, no, the other one, do the system. Even right? now, when he wrote the script for Halloween 2 that Rick Rosenthal did, yeah. he said he was drunk one night and he was trying to figure out what to write and he did the connection between Lori and Michael yeah. making them brothers. He always regretted that though. He always hated that and that's yeah. why in this David Gordon Green one, they scrapped that. And that's how they got Carpenter to come back. Yeah, because to me, that when well, we're talking about, I'm always, I mean, you know, that gives him a reason for doing what he did. And and I think the movie works well, better when it's just no reason. He just did it, yeah. out of, you know, because he wanted to do it. I think the more you get, more sequels you get into, you're eventually going to have to explain well, something. I, I you know, that's I, where I, I think they, they would, well, they, I, it ends up going. Like when you do a one shot, yes, you can do that. But honestly, I would love to get like a trilogy of something where you don't always have yeah. to explain something. I, I don't. No, that's why I, I, I never liked Rob Zombie's uh, Halloween as much because to me he needed to he tried to explain Michael Myers. I don't need yeah. Michael Myers explained to me. Yeah. I don't need to see he came from bad family or any of that stuff. I don't need. Yeah. That, but I don't mind them being sisters. I didn't mind them when they undid it either. Though, but, yeah. But getting back like to birds movie too. But yeah, I, I like this honestly. I like Rob Zombie's second movie yeah. better than the first one because yeah. it's like that's all he's doing in the first one is just trying to explain like why he is what he is. Right. Um, but yeah, this movie, man, this was just one I grew up with it with my mom and we would just hang out late at night and just watch this as, and as a little kid. So this one has just always been a special movie to yeah, me. Yeah, my mom loves it. In fact, I watched it today with my mom. She Did she you? Loves the I wish I could. I wish I could have went to my, my mom's yeah. house and watched this with her because this is one that I just always have loved. 
I remember for Jaws, I went over her house and I watched because it was Fourth of July weekend. That was like always our, um, like our that was like a ritual of ours during the, mm -hmm. the coming of Fourth of July. We would literally watch all the Jaws movies together. So, um, yeah, it, it brought back a lot of memories coming back and watching this. And this 4K was just gorgeous, man. I, I think for an old movie and like you said with the you know them having the glass in the background and the film being dirty and stuff all over the years i thought it just the the actors look so gorgeous and the the actresses yeah the the way they shoot it the, they always look Ruby really good Hendren is absolutely gorgeous in this movie man and yeah. they they the the people like in the 60s they just had this look to them where they felt like real people you know what i mean like where kind of nowadays it just almost feels like you're brought into like a different realm when you're watching a lot of movies nowadays mm -hmm. where like this, this felt like our world, you know, back in the sixties, or maybe that's just what it is. Cause it's like, to me, it's like almost time traveling to the sixties, mm -hmm. but I, yeah, I, you got all the cars, well, you got all the vehicles and, and stuff. They're all, uh, yeah. Cool vehicles. Just you know, the, the whole, whole look of everybody I mean, back then. The whole, the whole, the whole scene which is one of the iconic scenes in the movie when she goes out of dining and goes into that phone booth. Well, that wouldn't yeah. happen now. There yeah. ain't no phone booths. Right. But the whole the whole thing with the cars coming at her. The there wasn't are, phone booths back then? There's no phone booths now. Yeah, I now. Know. I was going to say. Well, well, back gonna... then, that's, yeah. They, yes, they, okay. they were having yeah, now. Sure. They have no phones. I, I, I heard you wrong. When's the last um, time you seen a pay phone? They right, were, exactly. They got rid of those probably late now. Right. Um, the whole scene where the birds are coming out and they're smashing the glass yeah, and stuff. She's, such she's, nice. she's like she's like claustrophobic inside it. Yeah. And then and later on, the same uh, stuff happens in the in the room when in. she gets caught into the room. Uh, later on, but um, well, that, that iconic I, scene, women. That is you know? such an iconic scene. What was the controversy around this movie? Well, um, you know, Alfred Hitchcock was known to try to basically sleep with most of his leading ladies was he he was he was made for uh he was married for like 40 years and uh but he was he always do while he was with his woman oh yeah oh well that's the you know, casting couch type, type, type thing but uh this you know, and, and you'll notice the majority of his movies he cast blondes because that was his yes he his, does his, his uh his taste so uh, according to and according to tippy hedron and Ann melanie griffith her daughter um he tried, you know, a lot of like hands-on sexual advances. And when wow. she spurned him, then he basically there was a couple scenes, the phone booth scene that we mentioned, and the and the um and the room scene where she has birds, where he didn't tell her that there was gonna be live birds and they're doing some of that stuff. And she got and in the and in, in the phone booth scene, I think she she got injured. Really? Uh, not you know, well not she broke something. She broke and, something. Wow. Yeah, and um, and and it was pretty much going around that you know Hitch was letting shit slide because he got spurned. Yeah. And supposedly he gave a car with I don't know like a dead something in it to like Melanie Griffith. She's mm -hmm. collaborated that. So and and there's been other issues with they did an HBO movie of Hitchcock and all the stuff did that they? happened in his movies. Yeah, oh, he wouldn't have gotten. Wow. He would have been. He would have been Harvey Weinstein if. Uh, if it was back in the day, but back yeah. in the day, they this didn't, shit happened, you know. Yeah, they didn't get, they didn't do shit about any of that. But now this came out till after he died, and then, and then of course she she originally said that some of this happened on the birds, and then later on said it happened on Marnie, and some of the things were vague, so you don't know. If it's ah, like, yeah, I was gonna say it's crazy forth. that she came back to work with this guy, but you know they were well, desperate. Well, no, because because Hitchcock put her under a seven year contract. Did he? Yes, so she couldn't get any other work. But she couldn't do anything about it. And, yeah, right. She couldn't get any work. And then after, really after the second movie, he didn't use her in anything else. And she was still under contract for like three, four years where she couldn't work at all. So I'm surprised she came back for the birds too. Cause it's that, was, that, was, that was 1994 though. That was a yeah. long time after that. 31 years. Yeah. So. And Hitchcock had nothing to do with it. Hitchcock was also dead by that point. So. Exactly. But uh, yeah, so some of that did happen, but I mean, uh, just, I wonder if he ever did any tried to do anything with Janet Lee. Oh yeah, yeah, Janet Lee. Uh, there's been there was issues there too. <laughs> wow, I had no idea. Yeah, I, I need to watch that documentary then. I need to like I've always just known him for being just such a masterful. Yeah, I don't know director. how much of that. I don't know how much of that's gonna be on that documentary, but there's there is documentaries about Hitchcock in a movie about Hitchcock. So, 
What do you mean you don't know if that's going to well, be? Well, because that's on, a, that's on a Hitchcock box set. I don't know how much they went into some of that stuff in a movie. You know oh, what I mean? no. You said <laughs> there's a Hitchcock documentary on HBO Max or HBO. No, there's, no, there's a Hitchcock I, movie, a real movie movie. A movie about him and yeah. that stuff. And that's covered like a in a movie. biopic about him. A biopic, right, exactly. It was on HBO. But they've and, also got documentaries that go with some of this, too, so. Oh, so the movie is the biggest one that goes into the shady yeah, shit he was yeah, doing. Yeah. That's what I'm curious to know about the shady shit. Yeah, I think it was, who was the guy that played in Silence of the Lambs? Anthony Hopkins. Yeah, I think he played Hitchcock. Did he? Yeah. Do What was the movie called? Hitchcock. Hitchcock? <laughs> <laughs> that would make sense. It was, it was, Anthony it was Hopkins. It was called, yeah. The relationship between Alfred Hitchcock and his wife Alma revealed during the filming of Psycho in 1959 is explored. Huh. Yeah, I think I feel like I do remember about I, I heard But there's also that. some documentaries that will cover that. But. Wow, they gave like Anthony Hopkins makeup to make his face yeah. kind of Yeah, and they kind of try to make him look like him. Yeah, because he definitely did have a very unique face. Oh, yeah. The, the cheeks and everything. And the way you talk, too. So Scarlett uh, Johansson's in it. Does she play Janet no, Lee? Maybe. Maybe she plays, Jan oh, maybe, no, yeah, she no. plays Janet Lee. Oh, yeah, maybe. Yeah. She doesn't really look uh, like Janet Lee, though. I don't know. Do they go into the birds on this? Because I don't see Probably, probably not. Just, I think it's just uh, Psycho. Yeah. But that would be interesting. I, I wish they could have bundled them both in there. But Psycho's obviously yeah, right. the biggest name movie uh, right. that he's ever done. To me, this is to me this is probably the second biggest movie that people know about. I would think mm -hmm. it's a rear window. Rear but window, probably. Yeah. I love Psycho. Don't get me wrong, but this is just probably my all time favorite. Just because I'm a yeah. I well, when that came movie. out, when that came out, the critics savaged it. They they flopped it and did not give it good reviews. And on Psycho, uh, right, what's that on Psycho? No, or... no, on, on the birds. Oh, they, wow, they, yeah, they because they didn't know what Hitchcock was doing. I don't think they expect him to do kind of like a horror movie, even though he did Psycho, which was yeah, Psycho is a horror movie, but not really. It's a psychological thriller type of exactly. Movie. And this they gave more, him a pass for that one. This is more of a horror movie, um, absolutely. So, yeah, but uh, the, but it's become, I think, in 2016, they elected it into the National Registry of Film. Uh, so it's it's in the top, like, what, 100 or something like that. It, it's crazy that, you know, a movie like this would be kind of shit on back then. Like you said, it was like a flop, and then it's just become... Well, mainly bad. because, yeah, mainly because big act, big directors didn't do horror movies. Yeah. Horror movies were considered to be schlock, B-horror -mo -b movies, B-stuff. Yeah, stuff. like Hammer Psycho, and all that. Right. Psycho was probably the biggest... And this was probably the biggest horror movie at that point that came out of Hollywood, my Hollywood director. Yeah. It was looked at as being beneath them. So that's why they did it. But, you know, this this movie is just a masterpiece, you know. Yeah, I can horror. agree more. Um, you want to do maybe your favorite scene and then rate it? Oh, yeah, there's so many, uh, or even favorite characters. I, I really like uh, Tippi Hendren. I, I would go Tippi Hendren, my favorite character. Yeah, I, I, I think she's good, but I, I like Rod Taylor. I think, I think oh, he really is great. solid in this movie. He uh, is solid. You know, he's a very solid man. I think man. Tippi Hendren is just so beautiful in this, man. I, I just like, I think for her, first to know that this is her first time acting, that's why I would give it to her my favorite because yeah. I think she, I thought that she's maybe more an established actress at this point, the way she, because I thought she really held this movie, you know, but I, I think she has great actors around her that Ooh. helped bring, make her better though as well too. Oh yeah. You know? yeah. Uh, well, favorite, my favorite scene is the schoolyard scene where she's seeing mm -hmm. the birds gather and running down the hill. I think that's, yeah. that's my, my favorite scene in the whole movie. I mean, it did that so well. They had to have the birds picking at the kids while they're running yeah. and screaming and a big action scene. <laughs> and for it to be kids, that was a big thing, you know right. what I mean? Like, and then, but just the scene where she's, you know, slow build up of birds, you know, back and forth. And it, that yeah. was great. And the diner scene is, I think, is really good too. Heck and yeah. and the, even the, at the end of the, the end of the movie is great. Um, but yeah. And as far as my rating, I mean, this is a five for me. I mean, all day, a five. I mean, I don't know how, you know, I, I wonder how some people would see it play. Because, I mean, there are 
definite slow patch in the movie uh, where you get character stuff and you get the romance stuff. But it's such a buildup with, with just the sense of dread throughout it. I mean, when she gets attacked in a boat, and then they're just having that conversation at night with uh, her and Suzanne Plachette, and then the, the thing crashes into the door like it was trying to get him and come in, yeah. and it's dead. And then the next scene with the, the birthday party attack, and then the school attack, and then finally Suzanne Plachette gets killed, and finally, you know, they're at the house. I mean, just it just ramps up, and it's so solid, so... It's it's a five for me all day. I, I I love this movie. It's my favorite. Well, my favorite Hitchcock movies. This is Psycho. Yeah. Heck yeah. I uh, I would say Tippy Hendren's my favorite character, and I kind of already said why. Um, like I said, my favorite would either be the the phone booth scene. Um, I think that's freaking all. Aw- just it's iconic. But that that's an easy one. So I would probably go the ending scene. I love just like that whole shot. Like I said, when it's all dark out and the birds are just sitting there. But right. that whole ending with the how with the house, I mean, for you know that for that to be copied so much and that to be such a huge part of Night of Liv- Romero's Night of the Living Dead, I thought I just thought there that was such a great scene where the birds are con- like literally barricading the house. They're all around. Like when you come outside, look at all those thousands of birds. And this movie genuinely made me scared of birds when I was. Right. This genuinely made me terrified of birds. Yeah, and and and, and it happened when the movie came out too. It did. It had that influence. Almost yeah. like Jaws did with sharks. Right. This movie did with birds. And in that probably... documentary, in that interviews with all those big directors, they mentioned that Jaws is a big part of this because they said, "Bird, the right. bird people were terrified of birds after watching this, just like they were, you know, sharks after yeah. Jaws." I, I was literally terrified. And I thought, I think that is like such a big thing about movies. Bats did the same thing for me. But this, like, gen- this was more like birds are, you see them every day. And you're like, at any point, these fuckers could turn on us. Oh, they're going to pick your eyes out if you don't feed them. Right. That's, why, that's why I feed them. That's yeah. Why I get them bird seeds, man. I want them hey, pecking my I'm eyes out. Guy. I want those little guy. motherfuckers picking my eyes out. I know when they get them bird seed, I get them fucking suet. I get them all the fuck. I get them water. I fucking fluff their little beds. Fuck those motherfuckers. I don't want them eating my face. Right. I like feel that, that fucking bro. dude, that fucking I dude that was that. in the fucking building there. You that see would that be scene? scary as shit. That scene where he goes in, they find the guy with his eyes pecked out. Yeah. Pretty graphic for a fucking movie in 63. Right. And you know? this movie is only PG-13. It's not rated R. So Well, it was never even PG-13. Yeah, I was going to say it was probably G back then. Yeah, it was probably PG. I don't think they really PG. had them. They it's, but you know, it's probably PG. It was probably G. G was for kids and PG, or was everything right. PG? Mm-hmm. There was probably it was G, G and PG. PG. Yeah. Sometimes and, it had uh, mature. I don't know what this was rated when it came yeah, out. Yeah, I know. That's the one thing. I'm a, weird how the ratings were. The ratings were even kicking like that to like the 70s. Yeah, I, like I figured. Um, but yeah, um, this is a five all day for me. Like I said, this one, I, I, I would, I would pick this over Psycho. And I, as much, I always loved the Psycho sequels growing up. Not to say I don't love the original, because I absolutely do. I love all the Psycho movies, though. But I just have always said that Psycho 2 is one of the greatest sequels, slashers, mm-hmm. or, you know, just sequels, period, of all time. Like, people thought, this you can never top this. But I think they did. I love mm-hmm. Psycho 2, and I love Psycho 3, which is directed by Perkins. Um, yeah. But I, I just love these two movies that Hitchcock did psycho and the birds. I mean, they are just so good to me. And uh, he's got some other good ones too. Like you said, like rear window and um, vertigo. What's that other one you were talking about? Uh, family plot was good. Family plot, yeah. I you got new knew too much. They, he has a ton of movies. Go yeah. I, I, I grew up loving the Alfred, Alfred Hitchcock present show. Which was kind of like you know back in the twilight. Yeah, there's an, ep- there's an episode you have to see. In fact, uh, I think I have it somewhere. Yeah. Uh, that you can see it. And I'll, I'll. There's a scene. There's an episode where they they this guy has this jar, and they all think the jar has like a head in it. Yeah. You'll have to watch it. It's a great episode. I'll have to check it out. It sounds kind of familiar. Yeah. I, I think he only did like two seasons of that show, right? No, it was up like. Eight nine years was it okay? I must be tripping then. Yeah, I think, I think the first, they used to all be on Hulu. The first, the first like three years, I think a half hour shows. They went to an hour after that. Oh really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 
Were the well, hour shows where there's two episodes, or was it just one, one story? Episode, one, one episode. One episode. Yeah. Oh wow! So it wasn't like a two episode thing, like. No, and that's why I, I like like Twilight Zone. I still like the half hour ones better because I, yeah. I think they tell a better story. Yeah. But. Yeah. I agree. Um, yeah, and, and that scene at the end there where they're coming out, and the, you don't know what their future is going to be, and the birds all around, and she comes out, and that crow starts fucking like picking at his hand and stuff like that. And they're all just there, but they're not attacking. It's a, it's a great scene. I, okay. you know, so many. Yeah. What, so what? Yeah. Do you, so what are you giving us? I give it a five, man. It's a five all day. It's a it's my favorite Hitchcock film. I love this movie. I I think it's gorgeous, and I highly recommend checking out the 4K release if you're a big fan of the movie. I think. Yeah, I mean, if, some, if we did like a top ten or a top twenty, it would definitely be my top ten, or top twenty. Yeah, I like I said, this is my favorite Hitchcock film. This one brings back, like, I just have a lot of nostalgia for it too. Even like just being my favorite and then the nostalgia, I, I, I really enjoy this movie. And I, I love the, the, the buildup and the tension that you get in this movie where it, it's, you know, it's not just like, it doesn't just come out of nowhere. Like you really get that buildup with, you know, the first attack, then you get, you know, the school attack, you know, and it's, I love it, man. Uh, and how, yeah, in, in that dice, you mentioned that old lady who's the expert. How many movies have we seen that scene where there's always like something's happening? And there's always this one person yeah. who's the expert. A randomly, yeah, I'm right. a very expert. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I know, I know about it. You know, they're always there and they have to like explain why. why yeah. shit that diner, I, that's it's such a great scene in the diner. That's such a good scene, and it it builds up the the one thing that they've always copied, and that you know how people. Stuff right. when, when they're in a crisis or there's something going on, something bad going on, and somebody attacking them, that they end up turning on each other. Right. You know what I mean? When there's always a, when, every time they do that in a creature film, like you said, in the mist, they, that's a the mist, of course, the, Walking Dead. That's the the it's that the people are the worst part of the Walking Dead. This, so this movie uh, influenced so many films, yeah. man. If you if you've never seen it, watch it, and you will see, and you'll think, oh, that copied off of it. No. They were copying off of this, you know, um, or influenced by it, you know. Um, but, yeah, this is a five all day, man. Five all day. Um, so, yeah. And I'm glad And I'm glad. That, this is one of the few movies where I am glad that he shot and he decided to film this in color because he could have went to black and yeah, white. Yeah. I always wasn't sure if this was black and white originally and he no, gave it a color no, remaster. No, that was always color. And, yeah. Uh, I think it, I think it really helps the movie that's in color. I do too. I I think it wouldn't it it would change it a bit if it was unlike, black and white. unlike the mist, which is better in black and white. This I yeah. think plays better in color. Yeah, definitely because of because of where they are in the ocean and the birds and stuff like that. Yeah, for sure. But all right, I think that'll do. And uh, as always, you know, um, we'll be uh, tuning in every Saturday um, and be on the lookout because me and Scarpet will definitely have more. Um, you know, recorded reviews coming your way. Um, definitely have a lot coming. And we plan to do a 007 series. And we're going to kick it off with Dr. No, um, which will have Perry on it as well. And we're going to try to go through all the 007 movies. So that's the official announcement of that. Even though I believe we did make an announcement uh, at some point last week, but we will be going through all. Yeah, that should be fun. I'm looking forward to be watching. I've never, I, I've never seen any of the original 007 movies. I've only seen like two of the Daniel Craig. I so and maybe one peer, half of the one of the Pierce Brosnan ones, the one with Halle Berry. I was a big Golden Eye fan back in the day when I was uh, playing on Nintendo. Well, you'll, yeah, before, you'll so get the, you'll get to excited. see the you'll get to see the really cool 007 in the yeah. Show. I'm I'm excited to see. I love so definitely be on the lookout for Dr. No, because uh, that will be fun, especially having Perry on there. And uh, like I said, hit that like, subscribe, hit that sub button, hit that bell. So you get tuned in for every uh, recording or live stream that we do. And uh, as always, guys, peace out. Watch out for fucking birds. <laughs>